This is One on One. So pardon me, but I've got to run. Still, it's uncommonly clear. Yes, I got to find who's now number one. And why my angel eyes ain't he? Those sure. beautiful sounds of uh, Suzanne Cloud, yeah. executive director, co-founder of the Jazz Bridge Project. What were we listening to right there? Uh, it's Angel a tune called Angel Eyes. Yeah, uh, it's something it's that Frank Sinatra. I think I don't know these things. Yeah. <laughs> it was beautiful. Thank you. Where'd you learn to sing? Uh, by myself at home when I was since I was a kid. Yeah. Tell me about this project. Um, I, I co-founded this uh, Jazz Bridge with uh, another Jersey girl, Wendy Simon, another singer. Um, she was from New York, uh, Newark, and uh, we had been singing full time in the jazz community in Philadelphia. And of course, after you're singing for 10, 15, 20 years, you get to see an awful lot of great musicians fall through the cracks and uh, really don't get the support that they need when they get really sick, when they can't pay their mortgage for some reason. If they don't work, they don't have the money to support themselves. And um, the jazz community, uh, a jazz musician works like I, like most people maybe might not know, uh, on the cash economy, you know. They get a gig, they get cash, and then they go home. Uh, so they don't have uh, pensions, 401ks. How about health care? No, they have no health care. How about dental? No dental. <laughs> In fact, that's why I'm here today. Big piece of it. Talk about that. Dental piece. Oh, Delta health. Dental has been uh, participating in a uh, in our dental program for musicians uh, for the last four years. We've been getting um, five thousand uh, dollars every year, and it helps us help musicians, uh, especially singers um, who need their teeth to sing, and reed players, people who play saxophones, clarinets. Really, anybody who goes on stage, if they don't have, uh, if their if their mouth doesn't look good, they're not they're going to lose jobs. That's and right. uh, if they lose jobs, then they can't pay their bills. These jazz musicians, they've given so much mm -hmm. joy to so many people. It's not that they don't think about their health care. It's just the way it's the industry set up, right? Well, when you go to see a jazz musician, you see them dressed real nice, sure. under the lights, um, performing, and you get this impression, everybody does, oh, they're doing great, you know. But after the spotlight fades and after they go home, you never know, they might be sitting in a house with no lights on. So um, it's just the fact that most um, musicians, um, and especially jazz musicians, there's no real support system for them. The DEA did a study in 2004 on the jazz musician, and they make about 8000 a year. What? Yes, 8000 a year. Mm -hmm. Th that's, you can't live on that. No, you can't. You can't. So uh, that's one of the problems. They, they, you're really taking a vow of poverty when you say, OK, I'm going to devote my life to uh, playing music that is complex, improvisational, very difficult. Um, and they know that they're probably going to be poor all their lives. But this is the choice that they make. In fact, I noticed you have your doctorate. I got my doctorate from Penn. In, and my, my focus was on the Philadelphia jazz community. And I really wanted to answer the question, why do you choose this kind of work? Because you know you're going to be struggling your entire life. Where'd you get back? Well, after doing a lot of life histories, oral histories, and it's really, most, most of it, what it came down to is they don't choose jazz. Jazz chooses them. And it's, it's a, a, an aesthetic that they really can't live without. They must, they must do this. It's a calling that, that is something that, um, if they didn't have that, they wouldn't play or sing as well as they do. Before we go to the break, what is it that you love about jazz, you personally? 
Personally, I like it's, it's a way of expressing yourself in the moment and uh, being able to be in a collective improvisational bubble with your fellow musicians. Um, it really is like being in a bubble and it's, it's like a conversation you're having, like we're having right now, only with music. So it's a lot different. Uh, you and I are talking right now. We haven't rehearsed this. Mm -mm. So I don't know what you're going to say. You don't know what I'm going to say. And, uh, but it's the same way with music. But most music is not like that. It's written down, you play it, and hopefully not you this. play it right. Not jazz, right. You mind if I tell everyone again? It is called sure. the Jazz Bridge Project. I want to thank our friends from Delta Dental for telling us all about what you and your colleagues are doing. Suzanne Cloud is the exec executive director and co-founder. I thank you for helping so many who have given so much to the rest of us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by Delta Dental of New Jersey, the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey, Kessler Foundation, the New Jersey Reentry Corporation, New Jersey State Nurses Association, and the Institute for Nursing, New Jersey Sharing Network, and by Community Food Bank of New Jersey. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. One-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato has been produced in partnership with TriStar Studios.